Let's continue with uh, the loss of indices. We have covered the first three in our previous video, and we are going to take two in this video, and the last one will be in another video. So, looking at uh, the fourth one, we have k raised to the power minus n. That means it's equal to 1 over k raised to the power n. That in mathematics is called a reciprocal. That is when it is negative index. So negative index denotes a reciprocal. And that is just what it means. And we're going to demonstrate it. And the fifth law really helps us to understand the rational indices. When it comes to all those things you know about square root, you see a nice connection in this video. Let's begin with uh, the fourth law. So I'm going to take some example for the fourth law. So we have k raised to power minus n. So k raised to power minus n equals to 1 over k raised to power n. And our first example will be 6 raised to power minus 2. What we are saying is the reciprocal will be 6 raised to power 2. And that will be 1 over 6 times 6. And that will give us 1 over 36. And the second example will be a slight difference. So we have minus 3 raised to the power minus 3. So what we are saying here is 1 over minus 3 raised to the power 3. And the third example, 10 raised to the power minus 2. It means 1 over 10 raised to the power 2. Try to observe something in these three examples. You notice that from the question we have a negative value. But the moment we apply the law, the negative disappear when it comes down to become a denominator or a fractional value. So we take the negative away. So you want to be conscious of that when you are working in this area. Indices can be fun, but you want to exercise care. And you will see this as we solve more exercises in our subsequent videos. So, you can try this. What would this be? 5 first to power minus 4. What will it give us? 1 on top. 5, yeah. What do I write? 4. You just got it right. And one more. Let's say we have 9 first to power minus 5. What would that be? 1 over 9 raised to the power 5. So you notice we did not continue to repeat the negative value when it becomes a denominating value. So we'll keep it to be positive. That is the reciprocal that we're talking about, the opposite of that number. Now let's go to the fifth law. So the fifth law states that k 1 over raised to the power of 1 over n. Our base number is k and the exponential power is n. What does this mean? This takes us back to applying the previous laws and you're going to see very quickly. Let's look at a good example and you can relate with this one. I have 9 raised to the power half. This is the square root of 9. So anytime we have this cap on top, it means square root. And the other way of writing it is 1 over 2. And from our understanding of mathematics, we know that the square root of 9 is 3. That was what we knew before now. But what indices now help us to understand is it breaks it down and prove the point. So let's quickly try to prove that point in this instance. So how is our square root of 9 equals to 3? 
So the first thing we find out is the factor of nine. That is, what same numbers do we need to multiply together to arrive at nine? Two will not, three will. So let's try three. So three in nine will go three times and three in three will grow once. So if we multiply three times three, it will give us nine. So that means from our understanding of the first law of indices, where we have k raised to power m, k raised to power n, we have m plus n. This will be one plus one and three raised to power two. You agree with me? Fine. Now let's come back here. We have our three raised to power two and then raised to power half. Let's apply our third law of indices where we have k raised to power m in brackets to the power of n. And what did we do? We multiply the indices m times n. Let's do the same thing here. We have 3 raised to power 2 times 1 over 2. What will happen here? These two we cancel out. We are left with a 3. So now you can see that the square root of 9 equals 3 from 9 raised to power half. That is the first one. Let's take another example. Say we have 27 one third. What would this give us? Let's first write it the way we expected to abide by the rule. So our base number is 27 and our ind index number is 3. How do we solve this? There are two ways by which we can solve it and I would like to use a very simple approach. We take the base number and look at the factor. So what is the factor of 27? That is what same numbers between 1 and 9 that we have to multiply repeatedly that will give us 27. So the number that comes to mind here is 3. And 3 in 27 is 9. And 3 in 9 is 3. And 3a in 3 is 1. So you notice we have 3 raised to power 1. So if we apply the first law of indices, k raised to power m times 3 raised to power n will give us this. That means this will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 and that will be 3 raised to power 3. So now let's bring it back here. Let's say we don't want to use this cube root. We want to write instead of 27 we have 3 raised to power 3 and then we have our 1 over 3. We can apply the third law that we just learned not too long ago when we have k raised to power m and k raised to power n in brackets. That will give us k raised to power m times n and that will be equals to k raised to power m n. So in this case this will become 3 raised to power 3 over 1 times 1 over 3. And if these 3 cancel out, this will give us 3 raised to power 1 or just 3. So therefore, we can say 27 raised to power 1 over 3 or the cube root of 27 equals 3. You can pause the video and try to practice writing this out until you know how we arrive at this number and this is another way by which we apply the law of indices in solving this number. I would like to take just one more before we conclude this video. Let's look at this third one. 8 raised to power 2 over 3. We can break it down and say 8 raised to power 2 and we have 1 over 3. Whereby 
we can write the base number as it squared and put the cube root outside. So to solve this further, we can further break the numbers down and that way we'll be able to expand what we are talking about. So in this case, we have 8. We look for the factor of 8. What same numbers do we need to multiply together to give us 8? 2 comes to mind. This gives us 4. 2 in 4, 2. And 2 in 2, 1. So we have 2 times 2 times 2. And that is a 2 raised to power 3. So we can bring our 2 raised to power 3 here. And these two here to give us 1 over 3. And that will be 2 raised to power 6. I 1 over 3. And that will be 2 raised to power 6 over 3. And 2 raised to power 2. And the answer will be 4. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.